craziness over God of War. Redfall has a brand new trailer, which just looks absolutely awesome. Samsung is finally getting the Xbox app released into their TVs and monitors, and Tango Game Work shuts down one of their games. So the God of War announcement release date, more information, whatever you want to call it, Sega continues as more rumors are swirling around. Corey Barlog is shutting down fanboys on Twitter, but he's also confirming that it seems like God of War Ragnarok is not delayed to 2023. Now, we were initially hearing from insiders that we were supposed to be getting some information about God of War Ragnarok yesterday. There was either going to be some sort of reveal a video or a release date announcement or even a state of play going over God of War Ragnarok and that obviously is not the case. Corey Barlog commenting on this the other day saying that he wishes he could give more information but it isn't up to him. And more specifically he has been going on to Twitter and really just making all of these fanboys look pretty bad as he you see him here quote tweet this has a video game ever made you cry he says every goddamn day and this person in response says why won't you all just go on and tell us that ragnarok is delayed so that we can move on and plan the rest of the year seriously this is getting frustrating and then Corey responds here saying because it's not and then there's even more responses here saying then where the hell is it why are we waiting so long and he responds, Randy, we are not Mac ready, which is a great play on this person's name, this person's Twitter handle, because obviously Randy Mac ready. And he says here, you have one week to show Ragnarok State of Play before I boycott and switch to Xbox. And then his response is even better saying you should play Xbox games too. There's a ton of great experiences on Xbox, Switch and PC. Never limit your experiences to many great games. Something that the deep console fanboys absolutely have no understanding on in terms of how to play games, where to play games, the fact that you don't need to lock yourself to one device in one console because there's literally great games everywhere. Great games on PlayStation, Xbox, PC, Switch. There's great mobile games, even if you're not a mobile gamer. I'm not a mobile gamer, but I can admit that there are definitely some great games on there. So it's just a great response here to just stupid fanboyisms and their response to a game that, yes, this is going to be a massive game. God of War Ragnarok, if it comes out in 2022, which I, I think it is, especially because of his response here, is going to be huge. Like, it's going to be one of the most talked about games of the year. I'm excited for it. I've been a God of War fan since the PS2 days. I've played them all. I really enjoyed the last God of War game. So I'm going to be picking up God of War Ragnarok here. It'll give me a reason to jump in and play on my PS5. And I'm excited for that. But if it doesn't come out in 2022, it isn't that big of a deal. There's still so many great games to play everywhere else. And then we have the biggest ownage of them all. And it comes here via the Red Dragon. And not the Red Dragon owning anyone. And the Red Dragon is an account that continuously pops up on my Twitter feed. Not really sure. But obviously, it's a troll account. It even says here, the art of trolling. I feel like the fanboy communities, especially on Xbox, continuously tweet, quote, tweet, and show these people off to everybody else in anger, which kind of plays into exactly what they're going for when they put stuff out like this. And I mean, I'm even talking about it, but not because of what the Red Dragon tweeted, because as you can see here, he types God of War versus Starfield interest, and then shows the Google Trends chart, and God of War has more interest in terms of the search terms and everything over the last 12 months. I'm not showing it off because of this. I'm showing it off because of Corey Barlog's response saying he's excited for Starfield and he will be taking off time when it comes out, completely ratioing this tweet here, which I find hilarious because the fanboys actually sit there and believe that the people who work at these companies who make these games for these specific platforms don't want everybody or as many people as possible experiencing their games. Yes, God of War is a PlayStation exclusive. It has been from the beginning of time, but I would almost bet if you were to ask Corey Barlog if he could get way more people to play God of War, this work of art that they have fostered over many generations of consoles, if he could get more people to play it across many different devices, would they do that? And I'm sure most of these developers would say yes. So there really is no console wars from the people creating these games. These are just stories and things created by the fans for some weird reason or another. And you see his response here, which I thought was great. And everyone else responding here. Well, this didn't go as planned. Learn from it. Do better. Red Dragon feels dangerous today. Wakes up. Bash Xbox. Bash Halo. Play no games. Play Twitter all day. Bash Xbox. Get ratioed. Play no games. Don't have a job. Bash Xbox. Don't play no games. Repeat. Same thing every day. It's only 1123. 
p.m. <laughs> well, that that one is kind of uh, an interesting response there. Kind of kind of mean, but also you know it is what it is. This person says, "Hold up, you actually took time out of your day to compare search terms of video games." Next, this ain't it, Chief. Also, the ratio by Corey himself is perfection. What a late night ratio by Corey. If I could afford to buy an Xbox Series X, I'll be all for Starfield. Una heartbeat. Alas, I'm broke. First, Aaron Greenberg smacks you up, and now Corey, imagine fanboying for a company that hands you L's, you hating a company that also hands you an L. That's a great one. Yeah, it's so true. You have both these companies, the one you're fanboying for and the one that you fanboy against, both ratioing your tweets. But anyways, that's the Red Dragon. Like I said, shows up in my Twitter feed all the time, and I, I can see why. It is definitely just a troll account, but people always fall for the trolls, and even Corey here taking time out of his day to ratio the Red Dragon. So Xbox's goal to expand the Xbox ecosystem into as many homes as possible, no matter what device you are on, is continuing as they have officially launched the Xbox app on Samsung TVs and monitors within the Samsung Gaming TV Hub. Now, right now within that hub, you can see a picture of it here. There's NVIDIA's GeForce Now, Google Stadia, Utomic, Twitch, and then the brand new Microsoft Xbox TV app. And it isn't just a place where you can launch the app and then go in. There's actually some cool features here with the Samsung TV. So there's the HDMI connected video game consoles that will be featured within the gaming hub itself. And it also works as a pass through for your controller inputs. So you only have to use that single controller rather than having the multiple paired controllers, like one for the TV, I guess, and then one for your console itself. So all of that's gonna be seamlessly integrated and easily accessible and usable with a Samsung TV. And your Bluetooth headset, so your Xbox headset, the one I got right here, is going to be able to be used across the multiple different apps and the multiple different services through the Samsung gaming TV app. Now, I don't have literally any Samsung devices in terms of TVs and monitors or even my phone or anything. So I can't actually show you a live version of it from my TV itself, but here's a video that Xbox put out showing just what the app does. No console required. Use your favorite controllers. I'm guessing you're going to be able to use any controller. If you want to use a PS5 controller, it's going to work because you can use that within cloud gaming anyways right now, which is a thing a lot of people don't talk about, but it's awesome. One day I was using Xbox Cloud Gaming using a PS5 controller and I was literally streaming it through the browser on my Mac and it works seamlessly. So there's so many different options you can do with Xbox Cloud Gaming and pairing different things together. But here is the actual ad they just put out for it. It's just a quick one minute feature of the Samsung Smart TV app that you're gonna get all of the games on it and then what it's gonna look like once you jump into the cloud gaming itself. So very, very cool. Just another expansion of the Xbox ecosystem onto more devices, multiple devices. What Xbox wants to do is a very good strategy going forward. As we even saw that recent report from the gamesindustry.biz talking about how services and subscription are what's growing the industry and what will continue to grow the industry as we move forward. So we got another official trailer for Redfall. Now this just came out yesterday and it gives you just more look at the game itself, the world, and the different characters within the game, all of their abilities and how they're going to be used. We did get that posting last week talking about the different characters and what they can do, but you actually see them in action within this video. Now, this game looks awesome. There isn't too much new here from what we saw at the Xbox and Bethesda showcase, other than, like I said, you see the characters here and the things that they're, they're able to use and their different abilities and weapons and stuff like that. But what I did really like about this trailer that I think that is extremely important for Arcane and for Redfall to message to gamers is that they really made it extremely clear right now that Redfall is a single player narrative driven first person shooter that can be played with friends. It says here story driven shooter. They put it up in big letters. And I think that's good because you still have a lot of people out there comparing Redfall to games like Left 4 Dead and Back 4 Blood, thinking it's literally the exact same thing, which when they first announced Redfall, that was the main narrative that was going on. People thought that Redfall was just going to be another Back 4 Blood and Left 4 Dead clone. So the interest of the game wasn't nearly as high as it was when they announced that this is going to be a game that you can run through on your own or play with friends and there's going to be a story to it. It's going to be like an 18 or so hour campaign, which 
that got me super excited. And then they showed off the trailer at the Xbox and Bethesda showcase. And I think it's pretty unanimous that people's excitement for the game went up really high after they showed off that trailer compared to what it was before. They also go in here and they show like the skill tree and the loadouts and how you can customize everything. But man, Redfall is looking really, really good. We don't have a release date for it yet, but it is definitely a game that I think is going to be a huge hit when it comes out. And it's going to be one of those games that potentially fly it under the radar. And then as soon as it gets into Xbox Game Pass, people are going to be talking about it. And Arcane really hasn't missed with any of their games. You think about Dishonored, you think about Deathloop. And I mean, they have they make game of the year style games. And I have a feeling Redfall could potentially live up to that. So this is one of these huge Xbox Game Studios games. It's going to bring a lot of people into Xbox Game Pass and a game that I'm extremely excited for. Okay, jumping over here to Tango Gameworks. Now, Tango Gameworks was a part of Bethesda and in ZeniMax. And once Xbox purchased ZeniMax and Bethesda, Tango Gameworks was one of those studios that a lot of people may have not known about, a lot of people may have not thought about, but it was a big part of that acquisition once Xbox got Bethesda because it is a Japanese developer. It's a, a developer directly in Japan that makes games for that audience that Xbox was going to be able to utilize to try to expand in that region. So this, I think, was a great get for Xbox. And they have made the Evil Within games, which are great. They made Ghostwire Tokyo, which just recently came out. will be coming out to Game Pass at some point. That game got a little bit more of a mediocre reception. But they also have made this game here, this mobile game. And it is called Hero Dice. Now, this game released on March 31st, 2022. And you were able to get this on the iOS App Store and Google Play. But it looks like it is already going to be shutting down just after five months uh, of service for, for gamers to play. You can see it here. You're rolling a dice and it is a turn-based battle game that combines board games and other hero battler elements. So if you're somebody who's been playing this, you're only going to have until August 31st and then the game is going to conclude its service and you're not going to be able to make any more purchases of it or anything like that. Now, this is interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, Shinji Mikami, who is the Tango Gameworks founder, has talked about where the studio is wanting to go and how they're going to be working on smaller projects. And now they want to work on games other than horror games. They want to get out of the expectations that they are only going to be making horror games like The Evil Within. I think they should make an Evil Within 3 game. I mean, people like that game. People like that series. And I, th I think they do a great job with it. But Shinji Mikami had this to say a while back saying, I hope to eventually change the image that Tango Gameworks currently has. At the moment, we are still seen as a studio that specializes only in survival horror. Of course, it's nice to have fans that think of us as a studio with a reputation for developing survival horror games, but we also want to be viewed as a studio that can create a wider variety of games. We will be releasing more and more new games in the future, starting with Ghostwire Tokyo. So please give us your support. And Hero Dice, I guess, was one of those games that obviously didn't pan out the way that they wanted it to, which is why it is shutting down in August. But with those comments and with this shutting down, it seems like they are going to have lots of resources freed up to make more styles of games. Ghostwire Tokyo is out. So I'm very interested in what Tango is going to be working on next, what type of game they will be working on. As we know, it is going to be coming to Xbox Game Pass. So we'll wait and see what happens. Who knows what this entire thing means that they have to shut this down. Maybe they just were not making enough money off it, or maybe they're taking those resources and putting it towards making a bigger game for Xbox. That's it for me, guys. Let me know your thoughts on the entire God of War situation thing going on, waiting for that release date. What do you think about Tango Gameworks shutting down that game? What do you think that means for what's coming next for from the studio? What do you think about the Red of Falls trailer? Are you excited for it? Do you think that this game is going to meet or surpass expectations or, or not be as good as people are expecting it to be now? And do you have a Samsung TV or monitor? If you do, are you going to be trying out the Xbox app on it? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you're new here, you liked what you saw, consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support. And I'll catch you in the next video.